The Supreme Court has overturned Roe v. Wade. The court's ruling is reverberating far beyond the country's borders. Women today have less freedom than their mothers. So this is happening in the U.S. right now. And yes, I am outraged by the verdict. But even if you categorically disagree with me, hold on a second before you close this video and click on the next guy's channel, who hopefully won't piss you off. I am not eating any food for the next 30 days. You don't want to miss my next point, because this overturn is going to have major financial repercussions on your life and everyone else's life in the U.S., no matter if they are male or female. Regardless of which side of Roe vs. Wade argument you're on, one thing is very clear. At a time that inflation is on its 40-year peak, the Fed is raising interest to the moon. Okay, I'm not cool enough to pull this off. Sorry. But yes, interest rates are soaring up like it's one of Elon Musk's little rockets. And all of this happening while a major war is raging in Europe. Stop. I need to breathe for a moment. Okay, I'm back. So financially speaking, 2022 has been a disaster so far. And honestly, we didn't need this latest fiasco to be added to our pool of being totally and utterly It is important to understand that abortion access is not just a human rights issue, one about morals, ethics, and religion, but also an economic one. In short, this will not only socially set us back decades, but deeply hurt women, especially women from weaker social economic backgrounds, but it will also drive our economy into an even deeper hole. And yes, it's all happening at the worst possible time in years, when Americans are starting to be suffocated by the raging prices of food, gas, and housing. And let's say it like it is, we probably have a lot more hurt ahead. The most common reason women seek an abortion is the inability to provide for one or more children. Now imagine Jane. Jane is a 32-year-old single mother of two. She works a minimum wage job and has little to no help from her parents or her ex. With only one salary, Jane is barely able to provide for her kids basic things like food, clothes, and a roof over their heads. And I'm not even talking about crazy luxuries like a babysitter or after school activities. Despite the difficulties, they manage. But one day, Jane gets pregnant by accident. So what happens from here? Well, you know how this story ends. Because although our Jane is not real, the whopping number of 15.49 million single mothers in the U.S. is, and a 14.4% poverty rate in 2022 is also very, very real. Yes, you heard it right. One of seven Americans lives in poverty. And guess what? 3.4 million of them are children. Damn. According to the Turnaway study, led by Dr. Diana Green Foster, Women denied abortions were more likely to be evicted, declared bankrupt, and have a high amount of debt. Additionally, those who were denied an abortion were also three times more likely to be unemployed than women who obtained one. As well, they were more likely to have difficulty paying for basic necessities and more likely to use public assistance. So why should we all be concerned? Well, there are many reasons, but because this is a financial channel, we'll be concentrating on the bottom line of any financial dilemma. How will this hurt our pockets? And to what extent? Because women denied abortions are not only more likely to experience poverty, exit the workforce, and raise children in poverty. As a result, they tend to rely more heavily on social services like Medicaid, whose costs are, you guessed it, passed on to taxpayers. In addition to affecting inequality in the US directly, this will also have huge economic ripple effects. Due to reduced earnings, increased turnover, and necessary time off, state abortion restrictions cost $105 billion annually in 2021. And this number is naturally predicated to rise with the new overturned verdict. And honestly, the actual economic burden is likely to be higher if we add to it childcare and indirect costs. Unemployment is next. It's not a secret that unemployment is, well, bad for the economy. Let me break it down for a second. As more people are employed, they can spend more on things such as food, clothing, and entertainment, which increases demand and helps the economy. Obviously, if you have a baby or a few small children and have no means of paying for help, your chances of being unemployed increase, despite what Kim Kardashian says. As we said earlier, the number of unemployed women who were unable to get an abortion was three times higher than that of those who got an abortion. 
Sorry, Kim, but that's the sad truth. If statewide abortion restrictions were removed, 505,000 more women would be in the workforce earning over $3 billion annually. And not only that, women that are already employed would earn $101.8 billion more. Can you imagine all the wonderful things it will do to the economy? I see free ice cream, smiling people on the streets, and one mean trip to Vegas I'll take with my boys. But I'm digressing. So here's where I am. If people truly want to be pro-life and pro-child, they need to begin with fixing the social safety net for low-income families. The solution is not forcing people to have children that they, the government, and the taxpayers cannot support. 